Hello, it's Scott Manley here and I am in Alameda's former naval base. You probably remember it because it's in Star Trek IV where Chekhov is looking for the nuclear vessels. Well, the air base has of course since been decommissioned and there are no nuclear reactors nearby, but there is the USS Hornet, which is worth checking out if you're a space fan because it was the carrier that picked up Apollo 11. But yeah, I mean, the base is of course slowly being converted or rehabilitated for, you know, commercial, uh, regular life. I mean. For example, there's some breweries and distilleries over there. This is a pottery barn outlet. But the building I'm here to reference is this one in the background here. That is the old um, airbase jet test facility. They would test jet engines in there. And about a year ago, a company called Astra moved into there. They are on LinkedIn as Stealth Space Company, but based on, you know, government filings and based on the uh, presentation they made to Alameda, those guys are building a rocket. In the middle of Silicon Valley, we've got, you know, a bunch of satellite manufacturers and other space tech companies, but these are the only ones I can think of that are actually building a rocket. From what I can tell, it's supposed to be a small sat launcher capable of launching about 100 kilograms into low Earth orbit. Prior to this, they worked with DARPA on the ALASA program. That was their airborne small launch, or some, I can't remember the acronym, but that was abandoned because there was issues with the fuel. But they then continued working on something called SALVO, which was a kerosene liquid oxygen small sat launcher that would be launched from an F-15. And just recently, they, it was seen that they were actually testing a launch vehicle out in the old airfield section. Now, the old airfield you've probably seen on TV because the Mythbusters would do a bunch of testing over there. Also, it was used for uh, The Matrix Reloaded where they built the highway set. One and a half mile long movie set was built all the way out there in the same place. But yeah, uh, local news cameras saw them testing a rocket out there. And we got a few clues about it. First of all, we saw there was five engines and we actually have seen these engines in the filing that they presented with the uh, Alameda Point you know, administration. They showed in this incidentally as well, the engines and they compared their size to that of a, a lawnmower. We also know from other filings that these are electrically pumped engines. The, pr the thrust they're talking about is about 8,000 to 10,000 pounds of force, which is about, you know, 40 to 50 kilonewtons of thrust. Uh, the rocket that they put in their uh, presentation is about 12 meters tall, probably about 1.2 to 1.3 meters wide. So I'm thinking that mass is probably about eight tons, which, you know, given the thrust they're talking about, does make it pretty darn powerful. Of course, there's probably going to be a second stage, but we, we haven't got any of these details. What we do know is that last month they actually test launched this at the Kodiak launch facility off in Alaska. You might not have heard of this launch facility, but it is it's a legit uh, facility and they've actually launched a lot of sounding rockets and even orbital space pro uh, spacecraft. Vector Space Systems, who are also building a small Latsat vehicle, they've been testing up there, but they haven't got as far as launching. The original test by Astra was supposed to be uh, in May, but it was then shifted and they finally got to launch at the end of their second launch window on July 20th, but it was very foggy nobody saw anything. It would be a few days later that the FAA confirmed that a launch did in fact take place, but there was a mishap. So look, it's really exciting to have a kind of local small sat, you know, launch vehicle actually happening in the middle of Silicon Valley. That's pretty cool. They are very much stealth. Everything I have learned about them has largely been from public government filings and other clues that are out there. They haven't talked to any of the press. Uh, when the you know when the local news channel got their video, they actually went and talked to the people at the distilleries because they were able to look out and see the rocket sitting out there being tested. Okay, before I go, there's actually a couple of other things that I forgot to say when I was on site. First of all, their engine performance, they talk about like 800 to 1,000 pounds of force. That is like twice the throttle, twice the power of the Rutherford engine that's used on the Electron, which is quite impressive. Again, they're using electric pumps, so I'm not sure that this is actually what they're going to be able to deliver, but it's certainly what they have been getting their grant money for. 
The other thing that's really interesting from a rocket science point of view is that they're talking about using differential throttle to steer the rocket. So they have a ring of five engines and the idea is that they can reduce the throttle in one side and increase the throttle in the other and the rocket will pitch in one direction or the other depending upon how the throttle works. So in theory you could steer or at least you could get pitch and yaw control just by adjusting the throttles without having to have the extra mechanics for a gimbal which could be quite a significant saving in terms of vehicle complexity. Now I imagine that since they're using electrical pumps they can much more rapidly and accurately control the throttle for each engine so it could make it more viable. Unfortunately, well Interestingly, the only other rocket that I can find that used differential throttling to control its first stage was the Soviet N1. And that is not really an example that people should be pursuing, uh, at, at least in terms of reliability. It's like saying, oh, we're as safe as the Hindenburg, right? So I'm going to keep an eye on this, but I just thought it was an interesting story to bring to my channel. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.